Hi and welcome to a new episode of my channel. Today I'm gonna talk about two upgrades I'm gonna do on the GPRC Signet 3. One is the VTX, the original VTX goes up to 200 milliwatts and I'm gonna install the Tank Ultimate Mini from Rush FPV which goes up to 800 milliwatts and the second upgrade will be the Tarsier V2 from Cadix, which is a camera which can record up to 4K HD video and at the same time you have a second camera which is your FPV camera. The current camera I have installed is the Foxier Mix and the Foxier Mix has few issues. One is maximum is 1080p, another one is the size, it's way bigger then the tars here especially way longer so uh, I had some problems to install the camera especially to put it in the angle I want it's around 30 degrees and if I want to go down all the carbon is in the way for this camera and you cannot set the camera into the desired angle you want to have it so this is the main reason why I'm gonna change the camera other reasons are also better uh, FPV footage and we will see how the quality can be improved with this camera. So this is how the quad looks after the installation of the Tank Ultimate Mini VTX and the Tarsier V2 camera. Everything fits pretty well. There was no big issue to install all the components. There are some special points I will go through, so let's start with the VTX. If you install the VTX without this protection plate which covers the electronics of the VTX, you have the issue that you don't have 2mm holes, but you have 3mm holes in the electronics plate of the VTX. So the VTX can move on the screws. And what I did is I cut some isolation of the cable I have laid around, put them over the screws and like this the VTX fits perfect on the screws and has absolutely no more play. The reason why I didn't install the protection plate is pretty simple. I just want to keep the VTX as cool as possible and all the covering of the electronics will make the VTX hotter. So that's the reason or the main reason why I didn't install the protection plate. And as you can see, you have way more space without the plate. So if I put the plate on, the gap between the top plate and the VTX electronics plate will be way thinner and you have more trouble to get the Velcro for the battery between the top plate and the electronics plate of the VTX. For pigtail MMCX connector I just ordered a separate pigtail cable with a 90 degree angled MMCX connector. This makes it way easier to install the pigtail into this small frame. The straight uh, connectors uh, go way back into your frame and hit the SMA connector. So I highly recommend to change to a 90 degree angled MMCX connector to make your installation way easier. The wiring was pretty simple because I don't use smart audio or anything else. So I just had to connect power directly from the LiPo and the signal which comes from the electronics plate of the Tarsier camera. Then let's have a closer look at the installation of the camera. What I did on the frame is that I used uh, two millimeter O-rings on the bottom and on the top side of the screws just to soft mount the electronics plate to reduce any hits in case of crashes. Then I had an issue with the cooling plate, the aluminum cooling plate on top of the electronics plate of the Tarsier. The holes which are made for 2mm screws were just a little bit too thin so I wasn't able to put the screws through this cooling plate. So I had to drill them out to 2mm 
to make the fit smooth and like this the plate was easy to install. Then wiring was almost same like on the VTX, I just needed power. Power can't come directly from the battery because the Tarsier supports only 5 to 12 volts input power. So you have to take the power from your FC which also has a 5 volt back which goes to the camera. So you can take the power from your FC to feed your Tarsier. The FPV signal goes back from the Tarsier camera to the FC board and up to the original VTX. But when you use another VTX you cannot use the connector between the FC and the VTX. So your signal wire, your FPV signal wire from the Tarsier camera has to go directly to your VTX. So you have to take out the video signal pin out of the connector on the FC and take your cable from the Tarsier directly to your VTX. To make the whole installation a bit cleaner I drilled up all the cables just to have not flying around cables so the cables are more stable in their position and the build just looks a bit cleaner. And if you have a look at the installation of the camera itself you can see that there is much more space with this camera in comparison to the Foxier mix I used before. So you can easily change the angle to the desired angle you have. If you use the stock cable, the flat ribbon cable which is included, you just have to set at least to 25 degrees or steeper to not stretch your cable. If you want to go with flatter angles, you just have to change from your 5 cm cable to the 7 cm cable which is also uh, included in the camera kit. But I fly at least 25 degrees so the installation with the stock cable which is already installed on the cam and on the board is okay like this. This is all about the installation of the Rush FPV Mini VTX and the Tarsier V2 camera. A test flight video will follow soon, so thanks for watching, happy flying, have a good time, bye bye.